So I recently did a 108 hour dry fast and it was pretty fantastic and I forgot to mention in the video, if you haven't seen it, go watch it, but you won't get the details you needed. I forgot to mention that following that dry fast, I fell into a deep depression for like three days. I was like, what the hell is this? I was so sad and lost. And I think we should talk about why that happens. He's walking somewhere. In my opinion, fasting is fantastic. It not only gets to the root of whatever you're suffering from and heals it, but it's just good for the mind and the spirit to connect with something, something up there. And fasting is just gives you a break. You get this mental clarity and you reset your life. You reevaluate everything. It's fantastic, but it comes with some interesting side effects. In my opinion, there's two reasons this happens. You feel this low after fasting and we will dive deep into it. But when I broke my fast, I was just having fruit, had my orange pineapple ginger juice, and then like some cantaloupe and it was just hydrating fruit all day because I was just dry for four and a half days and I just wanted to rehydrate. I did have some dates at night. That was stupid, but I felt fine. Now, while I did feel like I was hydrating throughout the day, I wasn't really gaining excitement. Usually, like if you do a short fast, like 24 hours, maybe even 48, and then you break it, you're just like refreshed. You're like, yes, you got the sugar back and you're hydrated and you're ready to go. You just had a nice little break and now you're, it wasn't too hard. You're ready to tackle life. But this one, I got a little too low. So this is the first reason I think people can struggle. Probably not everybody goes through this. Eli probably doesn't go through a damn thing when he fasts for 90 days, nothing but snow. I've seen it happen. But for some of us, I think when you drop below a certain body fat percentage or just weight in general, your body just goes into this conservative mode where it's like, you know what? You're not giving us what we need here. So just take a break and no, we're not giving you nice hormones to make you happy. I got down to 122 pounds. That's low for me. That's I'm five foot seven in some New Guinea cultures. And 122, that's a little on the low end. I had like no body fat. When you get that low, you're in starvation mode. I feel like when you get to that level of skinny, you just don't have enough happy hormones. It could not be like there's skinny people that are happy. I'm sure of it. Some of the fruitarians, like they live in that state of like 120 pounds or less, zero muscle. And it's like, they're thriving. I've seen them smile. So like, they could be happy. I don't know, man. So it might not be that. I just, this is, I'm theorizing here openly. So it could be that my body weight got down and we're just in panic mode and starvation and stop doing what you're doing, please feed. Because I feel fantastic now, like six, seven days later, I'm like, okay, we're back to normal now. I feel fantastic. Or my other theory has nothing to do with the weight and has everything to do with your life sucking. And when you fast, you're shown this. You can't hide from anything. Listen to this theory. When you fast, usually people are eating comfort foods. They're distracting themselves from their life. They don't really look at it. When I was on carnivore diet, I was fine with lesser entertainment. I was watching things like cameras I would never buy. I'm looking, watching reviews of them. I'm like, yeah, this is fine. I can waste time. This is cool. When you go fruitarian, you strip away that distracting need. And then you're left with, uh-oh, everything I used to do for fun kind of sucks. What do I do now? And then when you fast, it's even more in your face. You're not even eating healthy food. You're not even distracting yourself with cantaloupes. It's, you have nothing. And when you dry fast, you can't even distract yourself with distilled water or urine. That is the next level. So you're just sitting there like, uh-oh, what do I do? And that is what I faced and continued to face, even though I ate to halt it. I couldn't halt it. 
I think that's actually what stops a lot of fruitarians from thriving, is they're faced with that. They're faced with their life and everything. Like, they don't know what path they want to take. That's the thing, like, what do you want in life? I don't even really know. I've, I've debated this a lot. Like, do I want to be this musician? Do I want to make a movie? How can I help the world? What would be the most fun for me? I don't even know. But like, you go on this fruit diet, you strip away all the comfort foods, and then you're faced with these life decisions, and you just want to run and hide. And the only way to do that is with heavier food to bring you back out of this thought pattern. You're out here looking at it. Here's my life. Oh no, let me get down deeper to the ground and hide in a hole. And you need starch for that, or meat. I go the starch route. So meat eaters, I'm not judging you for being cowards, unable to face your fears. I'm just saying you need someone to hold your hand through life. And it just happens to be a dead, fried body. And that's not the kind of friend I want to walk with. So I think it's best to just face those fears. And it gets easier every time or harder. I don't know. But you just go right into it. So if you've ever struggled on a raw vegan diet in the past, revisit it. Maybe it was that, what I'm saying. And you didn't know what you're all about. You didn't know that you could be creating canoe art and make it into worms. You didn't even know that was a thing. And it is. And you could be doing it. Imagine that. So like, I just feel like I'm here showing you that the ex-vegan way was fun, but we can return and face our fears and make a, the best life possible through fasting and facing challenges. What do you think of that? Or am I just deficient in every hormone? Hormone six? I can feel that one's low. I'm going to leave. How you doing? I refuse to leave until you thumb up the video. Or thumb it down. But you're doing that because right now you are hiding from your biggest fear by pouring warm tea on your lap just because the warm, wet sensation wakes you up doesn't mean it's going to help you solve your problems. You now have wet pants. That's an extra laundry day in the mix. It's a lot of time wasted. You probably have to shower now. Depending on what you added in your tea, it could be sticky. Oh, it's not such a smart plan, is it? I'm going to leave. Subscribe for more videos. See you